He's here, get the drugs ready, all right? Here's the, here's the cocaine. Pop, what are you doing? Come on. He ordered a gram. You're giving him a whole bag. What are you doing? So we give him a little more. Come on. Pop, what are you doing? This is a business. We're trying to make money, right? And this is a bowl of macaroni for him. And then here's uh, some cookies and some biscotti, okay? Pop, what are you doing? Don't forget the macaroni. Yeah, I was raised by a single mother too. I don't think you understand family descriptors. Yes, I do. You said you were raised by a single mother. I was. But your parents were never separated or divorced. Yeah, I was also raised by a single father. At the same time under one roof? I only had one mother and one father. A single mother and a single father. You also refer to one of your grandparents as late, but they're all alive. Well, if there's one thing to know about my grandfather, it's that he's never punctual. And you always call your first cousin your distant cousin. Yeah, she keeps to herself a lot. I don't know anything about her. And what about your uncle once removed? Yeah, he was removed from the family photo when he divorced my aunt. You should be calling your 80 year old aunt your great aunt. She's not that great if you actually got to know her. I mean generationally. That doesn't sound right. And why do you call your sister your half sister? What else am I supposed to call her? She only has a torso and walks on her hands. Hey, Mom. Your father died. He had a dying wish. Bury me under Yankee Stadium. They're still building the new stadium now, so my plan is to drive cross country, go to the construction site, and bury him in the middle of the night. You're not serious. That's illegal. My life is already at its lowest point. I literally have nothing to lose. My dad was the biggest Yankee fan in the world. Even when he moved from New York to California, he watched every game. My dad always wanted to take a road trip with me to see a Yankee game, but life always got in the way. This is the road trip we never got to take. The trip leads to New York, but really, it'll lead me to finding out more about my dad, myself, our relationship, and life itself. Dad always said life was like baseball. It's a game of failure, so enjoy the small victories. Sometimes it's not great to trace your ancestors. We traced your ancestors all the way back to the Roman Empire. Wow. That is your fourth great-grandfather. He was a soldier in the Civil War. I wonder if he was decorated. A hero, maybe? His commanding officer referred to him as a lazy piece of shit. What was that? Your fourth great-grandfather was known as a lazy piece of shit. This handwriting is impossible to read. It could say anything. We have a team of archivists, historians, linguists, I assure you. That's what it says. That is your eighth great-grandfather. He was a blacksmith in France. Blacksmith is an honorable trade. Translated from French, it says that lazy blacksmith is too lazy to sharpen the guillotine blades. I can't read what this says. It says she was a lazy piece of shit. Were all my ancestors lazy? Yes. You do come from a long line of lazy pieces of shit. I'm just gonna go. We made that book for you. It's yours to keep. I'm not gonna lug this all the way back home. What a lazy piece of shit. It's so crazy to me when people are protective over their unborn baby's name because they're afraid somebody else is gonna take it. Were people always like this? Congratulations on being pregnant. What are you going to name a baby? She doesn't want me to say. I won't tell anybody. But you're expecting me to. I promise I won't steal it. There's only like 20 names that we've ever used. So there's still like millions of names that we could possibly come up with. I'm really not allowed to say. Well, come on. We've known each other our whole life. Just tell me. I can't tell you what a girl name is going to be. But if it's a boy, it's going to be named after me. Or if it's a boy, now you know their name. Because it's going to be my name. Oh. Oh. Oh, yes, yes, of course, I know your name. We've lived in neighboring caves our whole lives. It is a mighty fine name indeed, uh, especially when you say it. Mm -hmm. You always know, typical you. What is the name? Congratulations on being parents. Thank you. I see that your wife is sleeping, so I'll just talk to you. Okay. I just came by to bring over some parenting literature. I'll just put them on the table here because I see that you have your hands full, Daddy. You don't have to call me Daddy. Okay, Papa. 
Just call me Evan. Okay, Evan, this is a list of pediatricians, okay. information on filing the birth certificate. Okay. This is some information on shaking baby. Don't shake that baby in anger. I would never. Never say never, but definitely don't. I won't. And another piece of advice I like to tell new parents is that you never want to have sex when your baby is sleeping. Why not? Because if that child dies in her sleep for any reason, the police would ask you what you and your wife were doing when the child was dying. And you would have to say, under penalty of law, that you and the missus were fornicating. Huh? So imagine the headline. Child child dies while parents had sex in other rooms. Okay. So here's a list of hotel rooms, babysitters, of activities you can do in lieu of sex. We're probably gonna have sex when she's sleeping. First it's sex when the baby's asleep, next thing you know you're shaking the baby. I'm not gonna shake the f***ing baby! Sorry for the wait. My last patient lost a couple fingers, but he is feeling better now. So where's your boo-boo? I was painting and I fell off a ladder and I think I fractured a couple ribs. Maybe punctured a lung. It really hurts to breathe. That shouldn't be a problem. Let me just swish real quick. I'm ready. Let's take a look at that boo-boo. Mm. Do you feel better now? No. It still really hurts. Let me write you a prescription. You're going to want to apply five kissies three times a day, and you'll be good to go. Kissies. Yep. I think I need more than just kissies. Do you want a dinosaur band-aid? No, I want x-rays, actual medicine. Sir, I can give you a few more kissies, but right now my waiting room is filled with ailing patients in dire need of kissies for their boo-boos. I need to get better insurance. Is this good advice or bad advice? This tape is from your father. Let's watch it together. It'll be my first time too. Hi son, it's me, your father. If you're watching this, you just turned 18 years old and I've been dead for the past 17 years. There's a lot of life advice I wish I could have given you growing up. I'll give it to you right now. The most important thing I found in life is that when you feel that you have to shit, take the shit. Find the nearest toilet and take the shit. Do not try to convince yourself that you should hold the shit. I promise you, the shit that you'll take when you get home hours later will not be nearly as good as the shit you could have taken in the present moment. There was one time when I was a younger man when I felt a pretty big shit coming on, and I told myself, no, now is not the time or place for me to take that shit. I'll hold it. I'll do it when I get home a few hours from now. And then I got home a few hours later, and when I sat on the toilet, I couldn't shit. And I knew I waited too long. Buddhist monks have a saying for shitting. You miss 100% of the shit you don't take. If you're watching this right now and you feel like you have to take a shit, please pause this tape, go take a shit, and come back. The shit I held in, thinking I could do it three hours later at home, I don't know where the shit went. I honestly don't know where the unshot shit goes. Take every single shit. Trying to watch TV with kids sleeping in the next room is near impossible because the dialogue is always super low and then the music and sound effects are always super loud. So I always find myself adjusting the volume while watching a movie or TV show. And sometimes I'm caught by surprise. How cruel of you to define a relationship as transactional. <sighs> There's only one relationship you've ever had that wasn't. And she is sleeping in the room next door. Apparently this hasn't even crossed your mind. Hi, I'm 
Dorian, owner of Gray's Gallery. Are you a parent and don't know what to do with all that stress? Well, come down to Gray's Gallery and we'll paint you a parent portrait. With parenting portraits, all of the stress that comes with parenting goes to the portrait and not you. I'm not only the founder of the gallery, I'm also a client. Two years ago, I became a father. And thanks to parenting portraits, I still maintain my youthful exuberance. I have my hair, my health, and my sanity. That's because all of the stress I felt over the last two years has gone right into my portrait. One second. Oh, this is my wife. Hello? Huh. Okay. Yeah, uh, so I'm in a commercial, but I'll leave right now. All right, bye. One of my sons climbed up on a high shelving unit, then jumped off onto my other son, and they are both in the emergency room right now. So, I have to go. But thanks to parenting portraits, I'm fine. With Wix, you can create a professional website for any reason at all. I'm a married father of two, and when it comes to parenting, my wife doesn't listen to a goddamn thing I say. If it's not the suggestion of a mommy blogger, vlogger, or TikToker, then that advice goes straight out the fucking window. So I created a mommy blogger website using Wix. Thanks to Wix, I'm no longer my wife's husband. I'm mommy influencer Gina Tomasi, a busy working mother of three young kids. Wix allows me to use stock photos of a mom and three kids and make daily blog entries about my parenting tips and tricks. I mean, Gina's tips and tricks. So even though she still ignores what I say, she now tells me that's not what Gina would do, or is it? So thanks to Wix, I'm able to Mrs. Doubtfire my wife one blog entry at a time. Thanks, Wix. My wife and kids are in the other room playing. I've locked the door. I really hope Alexa is never discontinued. I remember as a kid I had a sister. She was smart. She was so smart. She knew everything. But she wasn't a know-it-all. But my parents always just bossed her around. They were always asking her a lot of questions, always demanding her to do things. And to her credit, she always did it. Everything they demanded she did and everything they asked, she had an answer to. But it doesn't matter how many questions they asked or what they demanded of her, they never once said thank you. I faintly remember them saying, Alexa, set a reminder. Alexa, what's the weather? Alexa, what's the fastest land mammal? Alexa, what won best picture in 1974? Alexa, what's the difference between a reptile and an amphibian? Alexa, play my favorite song. Alexa, is Wendy's healthier than In-N-Out? Alexa, was Beethoven blind or deaf? Or was it Mozart, Alexa? Alexa, what happened to Rick Moranis? Alexa, is it bad to swallow some mouthwash? <laughs> Man, people are being so mean on Instagram about the picture I uploaded of Ben at the park. They're like, do you care about privacy or don't you? Why bother uploading a picture of your kid if you're just going to cover his face with an emoji? What? All I did was upload a picture of Ben. It's like people don't understand genetics. Babe, don't get upset. The YouTube algorithm is against me. I just uploaded a video and was wondering how many views you'd give me. Best I can do is 150 views. That's it? I thought it was a pretty good video. I'm really proud of it. Look, you can go to TikTok and Facebook and see how many views they're gonna give you, but this is the most views you're gonna get. I promise you that. What do I have to do for you to give me more views? What if I change the hashtag? No. What if I change the title? No. What about adding more to the description? Nah. What if I change the opening? No. Not that I can do anything about it, but what if I was better looking? Nah. What if I put the title graphic on the video itself? Nope. What if I had subtitles going the entire time? No. Maybe if I changed the ending? No. What if I paid you? Now we're talking. I feel like social media managers love to use these go-to clickbait topics. Call up Jada Pinkett and see if she can throw Will Smith under the bus one more time. Oh, I'm sure she's got a lot more in the tank. I want you to find the oldest living white male celebrity who we haven't heard from in 20 years and ask his opinion on the latest progressive social policies. Are you keeping up with the Kardashians? Let's see what Britney's up to on Instagram. Let's run Trump's last truth social post. I have no idea if he just posted it, but I'm sure he did. Pete Davidson's gotta be dating some Somebody new, right? Tell Martin Scorsese they want to run his movies on gas station TV and see what he has to say about that. We need to boost engagement, okay? We need to get more engagement than Mickey Rooney, okay? Oh, you, you don't know who Mickey Rooney is. 
go, it's your boy Moneybags Mike and we're here with an all new crying game. The street show where we give money to unsuspecting strangers until they cry. Let's go change a life. Sorry to interrupt. Here's $100. Oh, cool. Here's $300. Cool. $1,000. Cool. $5,000. Cool. $10,000. Cool. $50,000. $1,000. Cool. This guy is not fucking crying. Toss me on my checkbook. $100,000. Cool. Most people cry by $1,000. See these keys? These are for a Porsche. Your Porsche. It's parked over there. Cool. Man, I'm running out of shit. See this house on realtor.com? It says sold. Sold to you, bro. This is your house. Cool. I am so fucking broke right now. <laughs> Do you want some money? Step up, man. Step up. Company commanders, okay. Mm. Across the Cumberland River, gentlemen, there is Colonel Moore's brigade. Doing? Now we must catch them off guard, off guard, in to be successful in our plan. What of is that is accent? That oh my gosh! Look how I'm reacting, and also like my hair. What's going on with my hair? Look how I'm reacting to reacting. <laughs> Look at me reacting to my reaction of my original reaction. Now we will cross, we will then try to make the union surrender. Do you have any updates from my friends? Wallace has published this picture of himself. I see somebody's going by a younger picture. He hasn't served in 20 years. Rebecca is feeling happy eating soup with the family. Hmm. I wonder what kind of soup. Marie writes, thanks for the birthday wishes. Send her a message, happy belated birthday. Happy very, very belated birthday. Charles has chosen to share this article about the railroads. That article is at least 10 years old. Donald simply writes, need prayers right now. That's all he wrote. That's all he wrote? No context? Nothing else? Are you asking because you care or are you just nosy? Prayers for what? I wonder what's going on. Check all the other messages. We will get to the bottom of this. Excuse me, do you know what time it is? Yeah, it's uh, 11.34. Awesome, man, thank you. See ya. Nice meeting you. Here are your shoes back. And? Yeah, I still think you're an asshole. It feels like the European winter of 1607 to 1608 out there. Look, Kevin, I've been wanting to tell you this for a while. Nobody gets your references. And we all think you intentionally make intellectual references to make yourself seem smarter and make everybody else around you feel dumb. Well, don't I feel like Louis the 16th? Nobody knows that. Not knowing that's like not knowing the book of cows. You did it again. See, that's why she left you. Between you and me, she was like 1970s US foreign policy, if you know what I mean. I don't. Stop making weird references. That would be like telling John Hunyadi not to defend Hungary against the Ottoman Turks. You're just trying to make me feel stupid, Kevin. I'm sorry that you're feeling like- no, 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 no. I'm not gonna let you finish that. What current dummy am I like? Okay, fine, you got me. I just use obscure, intelligent references to soften the blow. You have the brain capacity of a lobotomized ostrich. Is that better? What would have been your first option? You're stupider than Archibald Armstrong, who was court jester to King James I of England. Let's go with that one. <laughs> where was I on September 11th? I was attending Harvard. Oh no, I'll never forget where I was on 9-11. I was at Harvard. 
you know, I remember exactly where I was. I was, uh, I was getting ready for my morning class at Harvard. That's where you were? I was at Harvard. Who could forget? I mean, I was at Harvard. I was at Harvard when it happened. I was attending Harvard at the time. I was not too far away. I was actually at Harvard. Yeah, no, I was at Harvard when it happened. I remember I had just eaten breakfast at Harvard. While you were there, I was actually at Harvard. I was at Harvard. I was at Harvard. I had a class that morning at Harvard, actually. I wasn't actually too far away. I was at Harvard, actually, when it happened. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was at Harvard. Yeah, Harvard. University. I was at Harvard. Oh, I was saying I was at Harvard on 9-11. Yeah, that's right. I was at Harvard. Did I already tell you that? Where was I when they first locked down for COVID? I was actually at Harvard with my son. We were taking a tour of Harvard because he had just gotten accepted. He's attending Harvard, just like I attended Harvard. And that's where I was actually on 9-11. I just heard through the grapevine about Dan. Yeah, he got laid off a few weeks ago. Why didn't he tell me? Because why? It's so sad to hear. That's why. Really, why? You don't hear yourself, do you? I feel so bad that he's unemployed. I know you genuinely mean it, but you sound really sarcastic when you're sad and offering condolences. I don't. Why do you think that nobody in our friend group has told you any bad news for like three years? I just thought everybody was on a really good run, crushing the game, winning at life. No, it's been a tough time for all of our friends. Like one tragedy after another. That's awful. Wow, you really don't hear it, do you? Hear what? Let me show you in the mirror. Lisa's cat died. Oh, poor kitty. Roger's car was totaled. Oh, was he injured? Chad and Amy got divorced. I was really rooting for them. Eddie died in a snowmobile accident. What? Eddie was the best. I'm really gonna miss him. Why didn't you sound sarcastic? You didn't really mean it. Oh yeah, no, Eddie was a real douchebag. <laughs> Hey, just wanted to see if we're still on for Saturday at 6. Yeah, bro, absolutely. I couldn't be looking forward to it more. Same, man. It would literally take an act of God to stop me from meeting up. As long as your safety's not in jeopardy driving all this way, then I am stoked. See you Saturday at 6 p.m. No, I'll see you this Saturday at 6 p.m. Hi, is this the U.S. Geological Society? What are the chances for a catastrophic earthquake to hit about 5 p.m. or earlier this Saturday. That's not how predicting earthquakes works. Hey Siri, what's the jail time for somebody who calls in a fake bomb threat? How did I not get COVID? Hey dad, how's grandpa? Better than ever. So no chance of him dying before, let's say four o'clock this Saturday? Just one big tremor, that's all I need. How is he not canceled yet? You made it. I told you nothing could stop me from coming. Nothing. Bro, you gotta move out. Why? You gross me out, dude. By doing what? Well, for starters, eating canned goods out of the can without even heating it up. It's already cooked and it's in a convenient container. Your personal hygiene is awful. I don't smell bad. You barely shower. Twice a week is more than enough. Plus it saves water. All your socks have holes in them. There's so little fabric, it's pointless to even put them on. I've got a lot more mileage left than these bad boys. I've literally seen you wear the same socks four days in a row without even taking them off. Why would I? That would be like changing your underwear every day. See, I didn't know that, but that's unsurprisingly on brand for you. Do you change your underwear every day? Yes. That's weird. I've never seen you actually wash those jeans. You don't have to wash jeans. They're not some sort of magic fabric. They're self-cleaning, just like your back and your face. What? Oh, now you're telling me you wash your back and your face. Of course I do. Why don't you? You don't have to wash your back. <coughs> Sorry. How about I cook, you do dishes. Deal? Deal. What's all this? All the dishes I used. For this? Yeah. No way. This took zero ingredients or spices. It actually took a lot. Where are they? The flavors are nuanced. Where are the other 30 meals you had to have prepared with all those dirty dishes? Just that, bro. It's all there. Show me the recipe. This was a one-pot meal.
This place is still a mess. You said you were going to clean. I've been cleaning for hours. What did you do? I took out the trash, emptied the dishwasher, vacuumed the living room. That's three things, none of which take a long time. Maybe like 20 minutes tops. You just made it sound like you did more by extending how long you said each thing. But really you just took out the trash, unloaded the dishwasher, and vacuumed the carpet. Well, when you say it that way, it doesn't sound like a lot. Because it's not. You're the worst roommate, Greg. You're lazy. You're sluggish. You're slothful. Those are just synonyms of lazy. You're work shy. I wipe the you're counter. You're lethargic. Put the remote in the right idle. spot. You're negligent. I refilled the toilet paper. Mark wants one of us to pick him up from the airport this Saturday at 6 p.m. Tell him we're busy. I gotta do laundry. I have to get gas. We're basically swamped. Hey bud, let's go take a ride. Okay, sure. Let me just get some gum for the road. There was so much luminous from the, the amount of blood in the car that you could pretty much see it from space. It just glowed. Wow. Whosoever blood that was likely did not survive. Detroiters is on Paramount Plus. I'm gonna sign up for the free week trial. We already have Max, Peacock, Hulu, Netflix, Amazon, Disney Plus, and Apple TV. No more streamers. I'll finish watching within the free week and then I'll cancel it. Oh, it has Showtime too. We don't need Showtime either. I'm gonna get in and out. In my queue, I've added Detroiters, Billions, Homeland, and about 14 movies I've been wanting to see. That's impossible to watch it all within a week, especially with work. I took this week off as vacation. You don't have vacation days. Oh, but I may have accidentally quit my job. This is almost like a sketch in Portlandia. Never seen it. Where's it streaming? Amazon. But you have enough as is. No, I'm gonna watch Detroiters on that, Billions on that, Homeland on that, the movies on the TV. All at once? Yep. Like Winston and New Girl. Never seen it. Is it streaming? On Hulu. But again, one week isn't enough time. Now that I'm unemployed, I've got enough time and enough email addresses to keep rolling over into new free trials. What about Rent? Never seen it. Is it on Stars? Because I'm thinking about getting Stars too. I dropped the Apple remote under the couch. When's the last time we cleaned under here? How long have we had the couch? I don't know, seven-ish years? Then it's been about seven-ish years. God, it's disgusting under here. Oh, here's 50 bucks. That's probably mine. Your AirPods from a few months ago. Oh, one of them anyway. Ow, something bit me. Oh, that's Ollie. He bit because he's hungry. It's actually feeding time. Stop. Who or what is Ollie? I actually don't know what he is, but he nipped at me a few months ago and he seemed to like it when I gave him food, but I've never actually seen him. We should get rid of him. Well, that's rude. He's literally growling. What if we train him? Ollie, find a small rectangular silver remote with black buttons. Now can he stay? 